Yesterday in a game against the Toronto Raptors, Victor Oladipo of the Indiana Pacers suffered a devastating injury to his right knee, and as we've just found out today, ended up having a quadriceps tendon tear. What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. For those new, my name is Brian, and I'm a doctor and a big sports fan, and it's my goal in this channel to combine those two interests to help look at different sports injuries and explain them in a way that's easier to learn from and hopefully understand. Now, I love watching the Indiana Pacers. I grew up and spent the majority of my childhood in Indiana, and so this is really tough to see this happen to such a great player like Victor Oladipo. But again, I think it's another opportunity to learn. And so we're gonna be talking today about Victor Oladipo's knee injury and specifically his quadriceps tendon tear. As usual, let's first go to the footage and break it down. And there's a lot of stuff we can actually learn from the actual footage of the injury and the mechanism. And then also the reaction afterwards to talk about what sort of things we'd be thinking about for a diagnosis there in the moment. So as we can see him running down the court here, you can ultimately see here how his right leg lands kind of awkward with his knee really severely flexed and as he's trying to kind of protect himself and land we can see him ultimately just completely give out now at first after he goes down he doesn't seem to react that much but then you can see him kind of grabbing for his kneecap and as he ultimately pulls his knee sleeve down that's when he really realizes what's gone on and then kind of that shock wears off and he's in so much pain now right away the reaction of the medical staff kind of clues you into what it isn't of an injury so right when they run over you can see one of the medical staff kind of look down at his knee and sort of feel around the kneecap and then they basically covered it and didn't do anything except call for a stretcher if there was any sort of dislocation of the actual knee joint they're going to be trying to reduce it and put it back in place there on the court they're not just going to sit there and wait a lot of people were thinking patellar dislocation or a dislocation of his kneecap. Now, if that were the case, typically one, it's a different mechanism. Usually when that happens, the leg is twisting in some way to cause that kneecap to kind of pull to one side or the other. Also, we can see from some of the footage here that it looks like the kneecap is pretty much straight in line with the rest of the leg. If it were dislocated, it would be pushed off to one side or the other, as opposed to just straight there in the plane. You heard other people talking about, well, could this be an ACL, a PCL? And again, typically those involve some sort of twisting mechanism to the leg itself. And that's not really what we saw here. Here it really was just that planting that caused it to occur. Also, we can get a clue from the medical staff here. Typically, if they're worried about an ACL or a PCL, the best time to check is right there in the moment because the longer you wait, the more the knee stiffens and the more the swelling in the knee grows and it's harder to do those clinical tests to check those ligaments and as you can see, the trainers weren't doing any of that. They basically got out there, looked at it, put a towel on, and said, get the stretcher. If they were worried about an ACL or something like that, they would be doing different evaluations right there in the moment to try to see what was going on. The other clue that tells us kind of right away that this could be a quadriceps tendon rupture is you can see in some of the different shots that there is kind of this gap or this divot from the kneecap to the rest of the quad muscles. And that's pretty characteristic whenever you have this rupture because the tendon below is still attached. And so it kind of causes the kneecap to get pulled down and up. And then you have that dip or that empty space between the kneecap and the quad muscle where it previously was attached. And you can see from some of these clips that Oladipo grabs right at that space above his kneecap and seems to react as if something looks really, really severe and off. So let's next talk about some basic anatomy to explain where the quadriceps tendon is and how that's different from some other structures in the knee. So the quadriceps tendon is connecting the quadriceps muscles to the patella, which is the bone or the kneecap. Now the patellar tendon is the portion that connects the kneecap down to the tibia or that shin bone in the front. So there's basically quadriceps tendon, kneecap, and then patellar tendon. Now I've got to admit, this is a really rare injury to see. That tendon is pretty strong and it's not something that we see very commonly in athletes or the general population at all. Typically in the general population, it's people who have either been taking some medication or have some pre-existing illness or condition that naturally makes their tendons weak. But for it to just happen like this in a basketball player is really a crazy, really rare injury. Interestingly, one of the risk factors certainly for any tendon to rupture is having more chronic damage in that tendon that's pre-existing. And you might remember Oladipo was out during a portion of the end of 2018 with just right knee pain is all they were calling it. And so it certainly is possible to consider that he might have been having some pain in that quadriceps tendon 
that was causing some kind of irritation, some breakdown that then predisposed him to an injury like this. It would be really strange for a player to just all of a sudden, out of nowhere, rupture their quadriceps tendon. And so it's possible that what he was experiencing before in the fall was kind of predisposing to something like this happening. Now, of course, to actually correct and fix this, they're gonna go in and surgically try to repair that connection and reattach that ligament to the bone. Any fractures in there, they'll try to repair as well, potentially. And then it's a question of keeping the leg immobile so that everything can heal up nice and well, and then getting back through rehab and getting back to basketball play. But as always, I hope this was educational. I hope you learned something about our anatomy, about how different knee injuries can present themselves, and then why something like this can happen in a basketball player. That's it for this video. Thank you as always for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.